Hi everybody, my name is Jake Johnson. This is Jake Showcase. I do videos on Wednesdays. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about a, a, a key part of how to quit uh, alcohol and how to quit drugs, which is uh, rehabs and what life's, what it's like in a rehab. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the facilities. I'm going to talk to you about the programs. I'm going to talk to, about, to you about the people, both the counselors and the residents. And I'm going to talk to you about some of my thoughts on it. Now, I've been to nine different uh, 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 programs or rehabs, uh, treatment facilities uh, in my life, so I have some experience in this matter. And um, one thing we'll start off with is the facilities. Now, the facilities really vary depending on how wealthy it is. You can, uh, you know, basically the wealthier it is, the more different uh, rooms and equipment that you'd have, uh, like gymnasiums and, um, you know, halls. Uh, you know, sometimes there's game rooms and stuff like that. Lower end places, you know, you can have it as small as like a house, and uh, that's broken up into rooms, and they don't have any of that. Um, but uh, m most of the different facilities are are well kept. They're clean. Um, you can have as many as four people in a room, and usually, again, the wealthier places you can have down to two. Um, I I have heard of individual rooms, but I had never. I've never been in a place where there are individual rooms, or at least, you know, I didn't have any access to one um, when I went. So, the facilities are pretty pretty good. Um, one thing that they all have in common is that they have good food. Um, you know, they have basically, you know, the basics of, you know, making sure that people get enough to eat uh, and good nutrition on a regular basis. Uh, always breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and usually there's a snack at night. And... Um, and they also have sleeping down real well. Now, sometimes food is made by uh, the residents themselves. Uh, sometimes it's made from people who used to be residents there. And sometimes it's prepared for you commercially. But it's always uh, highly nutritious, um, depending on, you know, if it's, you know, it's always highly nutritious food. And there's lots of it. So, um, one thing that people who are uh, having problems with alcohol and drugs, we don't eat, right? Like, and I, I, I certainly can attest to that. Uh, going to, uh, you know, you basically you sacrifice your money on food uh, to buy your stuff, to buy your, you know, drugs and alcohol. So you don't eat. So, you know, basically, you know, that is one thing. And as far as getting up, uh, sometimes there's wake up calls where you have somebody walk around and bang on your door to wake you up. And sometimes you have to get yourself up because you have to be, you know, at your first meeting at a certain amount of time. And, you know, if you want to eat breakfast, you have to, you know, be there because, you know, once breakfast time is over, you don't get nothing to eat until lunchtime. So, it pretty quickly, uh, it pretty quickly cycles itself out so that you know you, you you get your sleeps in good because you're exhausted at night because they have you doing stuff all all throughout the day, and you know if it's not the first or second night, um, you know you're 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 all regulated. Now uh, some places have detoxes right on site. Uh, usually against the wealthier places, they'll they'll detox you there, which is usually that that period when you're initially coming off. Uh, it, and sometimes people, they, some rehabs uh, require you to be detoxified for about a certain period of time before you go into them. So, you know, basically the facilities are, uh, I would say, uh, you know, definitely comparable and they definitely are uh, good enough no matter if it's uh, real high end, big acres and lots of grounds and stuff like that or if it's uh, real low end. Um, now, as far as the um, people go, or sort of the programs go, they're all pretty much basically the same. Um, it's all based around the 12 steps, right? Like uh, basically the AA and the NA 12 step programs. Um, you know, so basically, you know, some, some of them will try to get you step one through four while you're there. Uh, sometimes it's just step one. Um, but basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you in sort of a pattern of trying to figure out how you're going to cope with life once you get out of the rehab. Um, you know, and, you know, so they really push the AA and the NA meetings very heavily. And, you know, they'll get you to go to a meeting once, sometimes twice a day, an AA or an NA meeting or, you know, both. And then, you know, the, the, there's other various, uh, you know, addiction, you know, 12 step programs, but it's all based around the 12 steps and, you know, your process in that. Now, a lot of times what will also happen in these programs is that they will, um, you know, have other functions like uh, some sort of maybe like time for exercise, 
or maybe like a sports time or something like that where you're having physical activity uh, usually there's a period where you're doing journaling or something some personal private time usually for you know again maybe about an hour and probably my favorite part of it was the one-on-ones now you get uh, usually a one-on-one -on -one, you know once in a while with your counselor or you know you know maybe like the uh, whoever's the big wig you get to talk to them maybe once a once a week uh, or you know you know that that's how often me you know possibly twice a week but mostly the one-on-ones that I'm talking about are the ones that you have every single day uh, sometimes twice a day uh, with somebody else who's having uh, problems like you like with the drugs and alcohol you have to go out you have to talk with them and learn about their story and you got to learn about theirs and you just talk about you know your life and how you deal with things and you know so the, these one-on-one -on -one things are really really helpful um, f uh, you know for people um, so then again there'll be a lot, lot lots of stuff to do with the you know the 12 steps in between you'll have like maybe reading sessions read out louds or you know uh, workshops where you'll deal with you know one particular step uh, so you know basically that's what the program is it's, it, it's trying to give you uh, get you into a pattern of how you're going to uh, you know deal with your life uh, be it you know talking with people be it journaling be it exercising be it and lots and lots and lots of AA and NA programs right which um, that's what the program is and that's what they're all like with their different spins on it uh, some go a little bit more religious some go you know more program oriented but it's all based around uh, you know the 12 step programs and the, you know in the big book and the uh, you know the NA and AA programs so the next thing would be you know what are the like the the people like now um, first of all you have like uh, counselors right now the counselors uh, like they're the ones who are sort of in charge of you and your group or you and uh, you know your 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 unit or whatever it is now there's two types there's basically like you have like your experienced hardcore uh, ex drinker or drugger and like they've been through it and they've been sober for you know XYZ period of time so they've been through it so to speak and they're your counselor right and then you have like sort of like your you know sort of like your more intellectual counselor who you know went through got all like the proper certificates and they're well studied and and stuff like that and they don't maybe have the experience that the experienced guys do but then a lot of times the experienced guys don't have maybe the, the uh, book knowledge that the uh, you know the studied guys do and you know there's value in both and you know um, you know there's advantages and disadvantages to both types of uh, counselors but um, uh, you know overall they're they're all very well intended you know, me personally, I don't particularly, um, I have a different approach towards, uh, you know, how to quit drinking and how, how I got sober. And, uh, you know, so I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily always see eye to eye with some of the counselors and, and some of the recommendations. But uh, I do understand that they're well-intentioned and they have a lot of people to deal with and they're hearing a lot of different stories. And, you know, I do think that, you know, it's not the highest paying career and, and you know, at the core, you know they're very well intended um, individuals and uh, you know so that that that's the situation now m m myself I've uh, right now I'm over three and a half years sober going on uh, uh, four years sober and uh, you know I I, I, I personally uh, you know didn't use the rehab uh, you know as my way of quitting drinking um, so you know that's one of the reasons I would sometimes run into uh, you know issues with the counselors now the individuals at these uh, rehabs are uh, quite remarkable actually um, they have been through it all right by the time you're in a rehab uh, you know something's really gone off the rails um, but they are the real hardcore partiers right you have like you know the biggest partiers that uh, you're seeing out at the bars these are the people who go to the rehabs and they're the life of the party they're the um, you know a lot of times so you a lot of times you see like really really good looking women um, you know if, if it's there or you see I you know I don't really can't really gauge uh, if it's good looking guys or not but uh, you know it, it, it tends to be like a, you know a younger to middle age crowd and it's people who really really uh, tend to uh, you know be the hard partiers uh, that end up in these rehabs. Now you also have the older people too, 
who can't seem to kick it, you know, just no matter what they do. Um, and, and, you know, once they sober up, you realize how uh, personable they are, right? Like, these people are very, very, uh, generally very, very, very nice uh, people with lots of, uh, you know, uh, caring and stuff like that. You know, I think that, you know, just getting sober and being sober and being talking to people sober makes people a little extra friendly. And so, you know, it's just, like, so nice because they've been going through so much crap, you know, out there. And all of a sudden, they can actually talk to somebody, like, you know, sober and legitimate. And so you make you make a lot of really, really positive relationships, uh, you know. So, you know, it sort of makes sense. It's the guys who are, like, you know, starting the parties and, like, they're, you know, pulling everybody together. Those people, you know, they, they end up, you know, kind of crashing. And then they end up into the thing. But once they sober up, they're really nice. And that's sort of why they were the life of the party, right? And, uh, you know, even... I would even argue like the closet, uh, you know, drinker who, you know, does it all by themselves, you know, even though they might not necessarily be like the life of the party, they're sort of like uh, the kind of person, the kind of people that, you know, are the life of the party inside of themselves, like that's what they think or, you know, that's the way they are. So again, when they get sober, they're really, really nice. And, um, you know, uh, one, one of the hard things uh, about uh, rehabs is that you make friends with these people real quick, especially after talking to them one or two times for an hour or a couple hours and just spending time with them. But, you know, once you leave the rehab, like that sort of uh, relationship that you form falls apart and it dissipates. Um, they don't allow you to have any relationships inside of these rehabs, right? Like if the male and females are not supposed to get together. Um, but invariably they always do, uh, or some of them do, and, uh, you know, they usually either, you know, you know get booted or, uh, you know, once they leave, you know, the relationship falls apart. Uh, so because, you know, again, it's like a, you're all of a sudden you're sober and you're getting along with people and it's the first time you're getting along with anybody sober and so, you know, the attraction happens, um, you know, often. And so, um, you know, so... So the people are great. Um, they have been through extraordinarily tough times. They've seen it all. They've done it all. Um, you know, right down to the bottom and up and down and up and down. And a lot of times people have been going to these rehabs again and again. Uh, I think the highest I ever heard was uh, 43 admittances. Uh, that was the highest uh, I had, you know, some, met somebody. Uh, maybe it was 46 admittances that I had heard to that particular rehab. So, like, that was a lot. A lot of admittances and I had been to uh, you know nine but you know I think it was only to, uh, it was to two twice so you know I guess uh, you know different places I guess it would be what would that be anyway you get the point the point is, is people go back again and again and again and uh, it's uh, hard so you they they know you know when, what's good what's not good and um, as far as, you know, are they effective, uh, the answer I would have to say, in my opinion, is no. Um, I've heard that within one year when people quit drinking, that 97% of people who have a problem with drinking uh, and swear off it or quit it, 97% are drinking again within that one year. And, you know, the uh, the trouble, you know, like that, that that's what happens with people in rehabs too. It might even be worse, right? I uh, actually even, you know, got to the point personally that I was actually uh, drinking in a rehab. Um, I think the longest I was ever sober outside after a rehab was 11 days. Uh, because usually what happens is, is that when you're in a rehab, or at least what happened with me, I was always like desperate and I was like, sort of like trapped or I had to go or, you know, there was ulterior motives, right, to going. And, you know, most people who go to these rehabs, you know, it's just, it's a it's sort of like, it's a time out, right? It gets you out of like your really challenging situations and it tells people you're doing something about your drinking or your drug use. And so like, uh, you know, it makes everybody happy. And usually the, 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 the time periods are usually seven days up to a year, but the most common is 28 day programs. And so, you know, it gets people sober for, for a while to think about it and, you know, hopefully begin to rebond with some of like their uh, closest family and friends and uh, stuff like that but the the truth of the matter is is that you know once they step out the doors after a couple of days it's you know like real life hits again right and uh, it's real nice when you have all, all your stuff done and all, you know it's all sort of taken care of and you're out of the stresses and troubles but then when it's right back into it it's really 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 hard 
again, right? And so how do you handle that? And um, and what were your motives going into it to begin with, right? Were you really going to quit drinking or not? And uh, most of the time, the answer, I, you know, I, most of the time, uh, you know, you, you say you're going to, but, you know, is that, it's just, it's a lot harder than that. I personally think that the biggest decision, you know, isn't necessarily where you go or where you don't go. It's, it's about, do you want to be drunk or do you want to be sober, right? I think that the, the sober life is a far better one. And uh, when I quit drinking, uh, you know, for the last time, um, I just knew that I wanted the sober life, right? I knew that I had done both of them, right? And uh, the sober life's overall better, right? And uh, I've been right. You know, it is overall better. And uh, so I think that that internal shift is the key, right? And uh, while I would uh, tell people not to be afraid of going to rehabs, and I agree with that, you know, don't be afraid. Go to a rehab if you need to go to rehab. You know, like the, it is a good time out. It gives you, you know, some time to take the immediate pressures off you. And it does focus and make you, you know, uh, on your drinking and gives you some options. But, um, you know, do rehabs uh, uh, help you quit drinking alcohol? Uh, no, no, not necessarily, right? You can help you, yourself uh, uh, quit drinking alcohol. But, um, you know, that, it, you know, they don't, they're not bad. They're not a bad thing. And if you, you need to go to one, go to one, right? And it helps you think about things. So, you know, I hope that that um, encourages you. I hope that that helps somebody out there. I hope that, you know, um, you know, you um, don't be afraid. Go if you need to, and uh, there you go. That's that's what life in rehab is like. All right. Uh, don't forget to like my video below and subscribe to my channel up above. I do my videos on Wednesdays. Thanks for watching Jake Showcase, and I hope you have a wonderful day.